and hello again it's time for the illustrious mmo awards by the goddess of ranting and raving although instead of celebrating the amazing parts of multiplayer this year it's time to fulfill my sarcastic urges and delve into monetization hell <laughs> the pits of mmo malaise and have a little fun with it as we go best mmo at scamming my money <laughs> and a big congratulations to black desert online for being able to scam a decent amount of money from my increasingly guarded wallet with how the mmo market has been progressing lately with quick cash grabs and pay to win imports i have gotten rather cautious when spending money and yes arcade was a big part of that i still spend money on the mmos i enjoy but only in companies I trust with a list getting smaller and smaller every single year. And mostly this is just on content I might want to play rather than all the other ridiculous pieces they peddle. If MMOs do have a rather comprehensive and insidious cash shop, I usually don't even bother playing them anymore. It's pretty much an instant turn off. Oh, how I wish I had listened to my past self a little bit more with my rants around Black Desert Online and its original pre-order packs and cash shop issues. How it was shaping up in other territories was a giveaway, but instead I succumbed to the seductive spell they were spinning before the Western release. I believe those claims of no pay to win, of a better Western monetization method, but instead we still got stats on gear, increasingly obnoxious buff stacking, subscription shit and the eventual gold trading it has now there are so many other smaller issues within there too and that is with this being a full priced purchase it got oh, i think another hundred out of me as well apart from that box price which is rather minimal considering what it suckered out of some of my friends but still it is a purchase that makes me feel dirty and was entirely unearned they done fucked it up <laughs> eternal crusade this has been a fuck up spanning since the initial reveal back in 2014 with the original mmo proposal being systematically gutted of many planned features and indeed its actual mmo components it happens though as mmos are a complex beast that has chewed out many unprepared development teams but you'd like to think they're aware of this first but it just seems like this development team was completely ignorant and unaware going into it to start with. This didn't stop them from peddling their overpriced digital garments throughout the development timeline. There is something rather insidious about having a functioning cash shop before even the most basic aspects of your game are completed. In fact, there was no game and they were still having that cash shop going. I still held out a little hope though, due to the 40K franchise, Bit of a warhammer nerd and an arena game might not be too bad space marine was a serviceable game after all and if they got the feel of the movement and the weapons right balance the loadouts and such it could be fun but no it was an absolute mess controls were incredibly clunky the animations rigid and it just looked like a muddy poorly textured mistake to make matters worse was just how badly optimized it was and is and the terrible servers and netcode meant it was barely playable. The how the fuck is this popular award? H1Z1, King of the Kill. The internet is a mysterious place and the world of streaming even weirder. The place where right now H1Z1, King of the Kill is one of the most popular streamed games. By all accounts, it is an incredibly shit game, bad graphics, terrible animations, and incredibly simplistic mechanics, but regardless, it has found thousands of online viewers. It's also quite an incredibly buggy game, still filled with hackers, and yeah, they have beat quite a few of the hackers back with the band stick, but it still remains, and it's still incredibly buggy with long-running issues seeing little to no improvement or updates over its development cycle it is a broken half-assed product that should be relegated to the dark corners of steam and promptly forgotten then there's the whole controversy of how the survival and arena formats split from the original game the original free-to-play game yet now having a box price although small 
Of course this split meant the survival portion got completely forgotten as well, seeing very few updates and additions. Totes called it, but still annoying how they are forgetting their customers. It's also one of those perpetual early access games with release nowhere in sight, and of course there is a cash shop involved. The finest free-to-play fuckers. <laughs> Arcage. So Swato was a close bet with the wealth of restrictions they've placed on their game that seems to be increasing with every update. The terrible shift in models away from an actual MMO. But yeah, Arcage and Tryon still has them beat for the sheer fortitude with which they continuously fuck up a rather serviceable MMO with restriction, pay to eat idiocy, lockbox loot, gold trading, shitty service and crappy customer service. They were and remain to be the most obnoxious free-to-play title on the Western market and that is actually reasonably impressive considering the breadth of bullshit we've had to deal with over the year. It's also because they keep seemingly innovating in the field of free-to-play fuckery, creating and implementing new money-making schemes whose main purpose is to squeeze every last cent out of its loyal whales. Changing previous in-game currencies into cash shop acquirable while increasing their grind like the vocational currency. Changes to property tax in order to sell more cash shop currency. Newer and fast amounts only available for real money. New functionality like the battle pets. And of course, the whole legacy server and a fresh start being just a way to sell everything players have already purchased back to them again. Although they still apparently fucked it up as you can transfer cash over. So good luck beating the credit card champions. And that's if you can even log in. Beating the dead horse. Wildstar. It is by all accounts dead and has been dead for a little while now. It's a cold motionless horse lying in the paddock that only appears alive because we keep beating on that carcass and seeing a little blood come out. Sure, it still has some players left around it, a community that is fervently clinging to the remains, desperately hanging on yet in denial about its demise. The developers also seem to be playing into the charade by occasionally putting on a new saddle, riding it for a bit, well, as much as you can ride something that no longer breathes. I say dead now because the actual amount it earns per quarter is so low that I'm beginning more to wonder if it is even profitable anymore, rather than just profitable enough. That mere amount it does pull in might not even be enough to pay its employees and keep the servers running. And if it is, it's not by much. I'm surprised NCSoft has put up with this dead horse stinking up its portfolio for as long as it has. As City of Heroes was still warm when they dumped its carcass into a shallow hole. Well, at least it was a comfortable and well cared for during its passing. Let's just hope the carcass is left alone because our corporate overlords have a penchant for fucking anything they can, be it alive or dead. The MMO Undead Award. Urgh. I have no idea how Darkfall is still around, and more than that, how it keeps getting revised and rebuilt over and over again. Unfortunately though, it's not so much a rebirth or reincarnation like that of Final Fantasy XIV, but more a corpse that suddenly started to move again. Obvious atrophy of the limbs and arms, skin peeling off, and an utterly dreadful smell emanating from its bowels. It wasn't exactly a beauty to begin with either, but you slightly admired certain characteristics, but now everything about it has been warped and worn to an unrecognizable state. Darkfall 2.0 was an outstanding mess, although more a Frankenstein creation made from the corpse of its fallen brethren than anything new. Legs for arms and an asshole where the mouth used to be. You could see what it used to be, but the construction was done much like an Ikea product by someone who barely understood the function of a wrench. And then there is the shambling corpses we got this year in New Dawn and Rise of Argon, rising from the same fresh corpse in a perverse mimicry of mitosis as both seem to be lacking the charm, features and feel of the host. Just another walking undead slowly shambling across the MMO landscape with everyone watching and waiting for it to realize its own undeath and go back to its grave once more. Best new MMO of 2016. Yep, I bet you were expecting an actual award here, but no. 
The sad part of this year's MMO offerings is that statement is true. The best new release of 2016 was Blade and Soul. God help us all. I said at the end of last year that it was going to be a year of revisiting older MMOs, which it has been, but mostly because the MMO industry has been so stagnant. We had a few anime inspired brawlers, one being a literal clone of the other to entice us, all riddled with RNG idiocy and the same old Asian grind, each lacking any real substance to keep people involved for longer than it took to download. And then there were a few more theme parks that barely count as MMOs based on how feature incomplete they are, just the bare minimum of a quest chain with graphics that belong back in 2000. Out of all that crap, Blade and Soul stands on top, probably because it is the most impressive piece of shit around and smells the least, so those of us with MMO sensibilities don't recoil at the mere mention of it. It gets this illustrious title as well because it at least was upfront from the start about its free to play fuckery. An RNG riddled nightmare with cash shop consumables available to alleviate the issues, but honest about those monetization methods. It didn't change its mind after people had started or make mechanics worse. It didn't add new mechanics or cripple its game any more than it already was, just maybe expanded on what was already there. It was an honest free to play scam and I respect it for that, <laughs> even if I hated the game itself. And here's to the absolutely abysmal year for MMOs and the ever increasing idiocy with free to play and monetization madness. Let us only hope the MMO gods are merciful in the new year and deliver us a bounty of carefully crafted Kickstarter worlds. See ya!